Welcome to Talk World Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. This week on Talk World Radio, we are speaking with Tore Nerland, who is the founder and since 1977 has been the president of Bike for Peace, a Norwegian-based peace organization that works to organize peace rides on bicycles all over the world. They collaborate with various peace organizations and schools and universities to promote and focus on the work uh, against nuclear weapons, as well as for peace. The website is bikeforpeace.no for Norway. Tore Nerland, welcome to Talk World Radio. Thank you very much. Thanks for being on. Thanks for all the work you've been doing uh, so long. Where where are you speaking to us from now? Uh, from Connecticut in USA. I'm over here for a tour around here to Connecticut and visit different uh, organization, church, and speak about peace here in USA. I come over here for learn for what the peace organization USA do, do for peace, and this is very interesting. I hope you aren't terribly disappointed with the work that U.S. peace organizations are doing. <laughs> We're trying no, our best. No, 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 I, I, I'm not disappointed because, uh, but, uh, but of course, uh, they should maybe come back to the Vietnam uh, time, you know, when they was more active and they are now, you know. So, but that uh, that uh, will happen, I think, because we have to stop the war in Ukraine now and the same in Gaza and Sudan. So this is my appeal when I travel around here, meet with a politician, meet with church, meet with a peace organization. I said, those free war have to be stopped now. Where... Do you have events planned around Connecticut that, that people can find out about if they go to bikeforpeace.no? Yeah, we have. Uh, we will go today to um, the hospital in, um, in uh, where is that hospital? No. Yeah. Yeah. People may in not Yale, in Yale in hospital, days, and we will right. go to the University of Yale as well. And there we will speak to the people there as well, to the student, you know, that we will do today. Tomorrow and this evening, we will be at political rally in Sanford, where they will have a discussion about people who will run for the USA Congress. Uh, that's terrific. I hope you will still be doing more events uh, by the time people hear this program. Um, the, uh, I, I, I guess it would be good to know the history of your organization, uh, how mm. you got started and what you've been doing since 1977. Yeah, uh, when I was uh, young, I was a good football player. I played football on my local team. But when I was 15, I lost part of my vision. And, uh, and it took me two months uh, from uh, be a per, uh, sighted person to be partially blind. I only 5% vision. And when I lost my vision, I could not play football. So after that, I started to biking on a tandem bicycle, bicycle for two. And I biked for many bike rides with people with uh, visual impaired in Norway or other places. And I met many people who disabled because of um, uh, war in, uh, in Vietnam, Algeria, Second World War. So, the, so uh, this way I started biking first for a peace ride in, um, in uh, Northern Ireland between Catholic and Protestant. That was the first peace ride we had together with uh, Nobel Peace Prize winner, Mary Corgan and Betty and William. And uh, there we had Catholic and Protestant on the same bicycle. They only changed to sit on the front, disabled person on the back seat and non-disabled on the front seat. So that was our first peace ride. After that, um, I biked around the world in 1979 on not on 80 days, but on 79 days. We started in London, went through Europe to Egypt, Mumbai, Calcutta, there I get involved with Gandhi's very non-violence. Met a lot of people who have worked with uh, Gandhi when uh, back, in, uh, back in the 40s or 30s, you know, I met on that tour. And after that, we went to Hiroshima. And there I met a lady, her name was Kamo Fujiwara. She was blind and lumped from shoulder and down. And she said, good that you buy for the disabled people and so on, but why in the world you don't bike against nuclear weapon? 
So that inspired me or Buy for Peace to start a campaign against nuclear weapon. The first international campaign we had against nuclear weapon was from Moscow to Oslo, New York, Washington, with 20 people from Soviet Union, 20 people from Scandinavia and USA, 40 days we bike from Moscow, Oslo, plane to New York and Washington DC. We have big rally in every city. This was under the Cold War, before Glasnost, before Perestroikas. And uh, we had many big rally. At that time, there was 80,000 nuclear weapons. But now, thank God, or thank uh, the peace movement, we are down to 11,000 nuclear weapons. And uh, we need to get rid of all nuclear weapons. And that is the dream by for peace work with. And we work with different peace organizations about that. That's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, they are still enough weapons to destroy everything. Uh, oh, they are. They are 11,000 too much more nuclear weapon. And, and uh, Obama, he received the Nobel Peace Prize back in, uh, I think it was 2009, for he had a good speech in Prague and they get rid of nuclear weapon. But after he received the nuclear, after he received the Nobel Peace Prize, he increase the program for the nuclear weapon, double our, uh, the president before him. So it's not uh, uh, the Nobel Peace Prize should not be for president. That should be for people who really do peace work, like you do. I, I, I'm not sure I agree with everyone else on what makes a good speech. <laughs> when you give a speech that says, I wish we didn't have nuclear weapons, but we need them. And maybe people can get rid of them in some future lifetime, but not in my lifetime. I don't consider that a good speech. I consider that a bad speech. I agree with you 100%. We had to get rid of nuclear weapons in the near future. And uh, I work particularly with Kazakhstan uh, uh, people or government because they become independent in 1991 and they had 1,410 nuclear weapons and they dismantled all nuclear weapons. And they have a mission as well in 2045, world should be out nuclear weapons. And uh, for sure, we have to do it before that time. But nuclear weapon can simply not be used in any conflict. But today we have to stop the war in Ukraine because if we continue like this, I'm afraid somebody will use nuclear weapon. <clears throat> that we cannot be used. So today there's so opposition about the war in Ukraine, in Ukraine themselves, you know, and uh, of course in Russia too. So. My appeal to the USA government and to the Norwegian government, start doing a negotiation now. Tore in Ireland, uh, I want to, I agree with you 100%, but I want to ask you a question that I get asked by people who I consider absolutely insane. But to play devil's advocate, what do you say to someone who says, Ukraine got rid of its nuclear weapons. It should have kept them. It wouldn't have been invaded if it had only kept its nuclear weapons. I think I think um, uh, that could happen if they had nuclear weapons as well. You know, you see, you see, uh, uh, people invade nation. You know, as well. You know, uh, I'm not. I think that could happen as well if they have had nuclear weapon. So. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. So, so when you bike against nuclear weapons, how do people get the message? Do you have shirts oh, or oh, banners yeah, or we, flyers? We, or? we bike with big flag and said no to nuclear weapon, you know. And uh, we have a <clears throat> big speaker said, uh, welcome to bike with bike of peace against nuclear weapon and so on when we bike into the towns. And... We're not only biking, we bike into all local emirs, city hall, you know, on the road and talk to them. So because this is important to do on the grassroots level. So we often work as well with organization called Mia for Peace, because there are many politicians, a member of that organization too, out of Hiroshima. So that one other organization we work with, but we try to get member of that organization for local emirs as well when we bike to different cities over the whole world. We have been biking in 120 countries over the whole world for peace and against nuclear weapons. Wow. Mir, Mir in Russian is world and is peace, right? Yeah, um, that's right. Mir, 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 that's a peace on the earth. Mir, Mir. 
And I've been biking many Sorry. times in Russia. <clears throat> and of course, uh, Russia are very friendly people, many people you meet, you know, but the war in Ukraine start not only with Russia, they start with uh, the West, you know, when USA went in and started coup in 2014, you know, in, uh, in Kyiv, you know. So this way, you now is a time for negotiation, you know, and they have to, do, they should have done this for over two years ago, as they was on the way to do in in Istanbul, you know, and uh, but they should now start again to do negotiations. So my appeal is the people in the West should start doing negotiation with Russia. You know, we did negotiation about to get out people who were sitting in prison in Russia. Why can we not do negotiation now with Russia and find peaceful solution? A very, very good question. Uh... Tora Nederland, I'm I'm going to Norway on the second week of November. Uh, do people in Norway understand what you just said about how this war began and what it would take to end it and the need to end it? Or have they fallen in love with NATO and being occupied with U.S. military bases all over their country? Where where, where does the peace movement stand in Norway right now? First of all, I have to say at the uh, Norwegian parliament, I followed the USA politics too much. You know, there was two party was against to send weapon to, uh, to Ukraine. There was the social left party and the red party. But after a while, they uh, get into as well and they are supported to send weapon to Ukraine. And they think they can win the war, you know. So, uh, no, we are starting a new party in Norway called Peace and Justice Party. A fred or net rustling in Norwegian, but peace and justice. Because the solution is not the, to you send weapon there. We need to do negotiation and find peaceful solution. And uh, we spend, I think we have planned to spend $20 mil, billion on this war. It's crazy, but it's not only that. But how many people get killed on Ukraine and the Russian side, you know? So I meet so many people in Ukraine as well, connection with being Ukraine. They said, please try to stop this war because it costs too many lives in our area. So the peace movement in Norway are uh, quite weak, but we try to wake them up, you know, to be more stronger. So that is our appeal, you know, to start a new political party. And two, what you said about the American bases in Norway. For in, I think it was 2019, they get four bases. And last year they get eight new American bases in Norway, USA. And I don't understand why they need all these uh, bases when Norway is a member of NATO, USA will have 12 military bases in Norway. And no, uh, not only Norway, I think Sweden and Finland have get at least 30 American bases on their ground as well the last one or two years now. Will they get in the near future? You know, in Australia, they tried to ask the United States, are you going to bring any nuclear weapons to these new U.S. bases in Australia, even passing through on the way to somewhere else? Uh, don't we have a right to know? And the answer was no, you don't have any right to know. And you don't have any right to know if we poison your soil or your water. And if any of our troops uh, vandalize or rape or drive drunk, that's none of your business. They're not subject to your laws. Do, do people in Norway understand that, that this is what it means to have a U.S. base there? No, they don't understand, but they think everything comes from USA. It's a good thing for those politicians, but they are blind, you know. They not see the reality, you know, because... Norway have followed too much American policy. <clears throat> in Afghanistan, what we went into, we spent million of crown or dollar there. What did we get out of it? Nothing. We lost the war in Afghanistan. The same in Libya. When Hillary Clinton, the foreign minister, the state minister of USA at that time, asked Norway to help them to uh, bombing Libya, uh, Norway, Denmark, and England and um, Great Britain and France, we killed 100,000 people. Nobody talked about it. What did we get out of it? Lot of refugees, Iraq war, what did we get out of it? Only trouble and 
bomb people back to the stone age more or less you know it's crazy what we are doing this is not in this a christian sphere to do this sort of things what we do in the west you know to bomb those nations you know and norway is part of this and this way is good that you go to norway talk to them to wake up you know and uh, this is reason we need a very strong peace movement in america or in norway you know yesterday you met a guy who have been working with the Vietnamese on the, uh, in the peace movement under the Vietnam. That was time the, Vietnam, uh, the peace movement in USA very strong, and the same in Norway and in Europe as well. And you know that back in 1980s was very strong movement against nuclear weapon in Europe or in America. The same we need now to stop all this war. You know, we need to use the money for social development in the third world and as well in USA for the poor people, and the same in Norway as well. We are speaking with Tora Nerland, who is the president of Bike for Peace, and the website is bikeforpeace.no. Tora, a lot of us in the United States have always wanted things that we thought they had in Norway and Sweden and Finland, things like health care and education and retirement and vacations. And now we see this unelected leader of NATO going to the presidents and prime ministers and saying, no, 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 you need to take the money out of all those things and put it into weapons. We need 2% of your economy. Donald Trump wants 3% of your economy. The next guy's gonna want 4% of your economy in weapons. This to me is, is very sad, it's tragic. If, you know, if Norway follows the failed policies of the United States instead of the United States following the successful policies of Norway. I like what you said that today. Norway have been very good at a social welfare program before, but now we spend too much money on not on Ukrainian war, but to 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 buy a new weapon and to produce more weapon and get a bigger military in Norway now as well. Instead of we should use the money to improve our hospital, you know, the state run the hospital, but I went to the hospital in uh, my town, Stavanger, for last year ago. We had to live five people, six people in one room. You know, it was unbelievable, you know. So this way, I have appeal at the politician in Norway. They should use the money on social welfare instead of use the money for the military. They get all the money they want for get into the military. No discussion. And this we have to stand up uh, against, you know. So uh, it's a very important to, to change this policy, you know, in Norway as well, that we have become so militarized nation, you know, because we have become copy of USA policy. And uh, Jens Stoltenberg, our former uh, general secretary of NATO, had done a very bad job for, for the world, you know. Before the NATO was, uh, should be a defense organization, it's not a defense organization. They've gone to different war, you know, as you know, to Afghanistan, Libya, and so on. And now to uh, Ukraine, now they attack into Russia as well. It's, it's incredible that people believe uh, NATO is a defensive organization when not a single one of its wars has even pretended to be defensive. Um, if people want to want to get involved, or I want to do biking for peace, uh, want to do it with you or want to do it in their own part of the world when you're not there, how, how can people uh, try out this, uh, this peace tactic? I have a, the reason we use bicycle is going faster and the walk for peace. And this way, our mission is we bring the mission with the biking, you know, and the biking is the first of all, a, a peaceful way to do it. And two, not too much pollution with biking. You only need a little bit of oil on your chains, but that's it. But also that we want people to organize bike tour over the whole world. We have people organize bicycle tour to different parts of the world. And next year we plan to go from Boston uh, and USA to Connecticut, New York and Washington DC. Maybe that will be in September next year. But we want other people to use the bicycle as the platform to speak out the message to people in their own country against nuclear weapon, against the war in Ukraine, against the war in the Middle East. It's so terrible what happened in the world today in Gaza. Unbelievable, you know. And the same in Sudan. Nobody, there's a 10 million refugee in the country of Sudan. And I heard that war 
uh, people from the uh, USA are supporting it, and uh, maybe China too support it. You know, this we cannot have. We need a negotiation in this country. So the people I meet on my way, they said, please talk to the politician and, and, and tell them from your bicycle or wherever you meet them to stop those wars. I think you've been in touch, Tora, with the World Beyond War chapter in Connecticut. I hope we can get all kinds of organizations and local chapters and uh, and groups to uh, promote your events next year when you go uh, all the way to Washington, D.C. And I hope I can meet you uh, there in Washington, D.C., which is not terribly far from from where I am. Uh, so I hope you'll you'll let us all know the times and places. Yeah, we will. And we'll be on wall do a very good job. And I hope your organization will receive the Nobel Peace Prize in the near future, because your organization is a grassroots organization and you do the work much better than some of those politicians who have received the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> you know, I've always admired Norway for having the Nobel Peace Prize, but even more for having Frederick Heffermel, who we lost last year, who Ooh. critiqued the Nobel Peace Prize and said oh. they should really give it to peacemakers. And I think maybe this year, for maybe the first time in six or seven years, they, they did give it to peacemakers, don't you think? Yeah, it is very touchful when you talk about Frederick Heffermel, long time struggling for peace. And he wrote this book at uh, the, the, the grassroots organization that should have the Nobel Peace Prize, not for the politician. And I think you are right. It's very good that this organization for Hiroshima, Nakasagi received the Nobel Peace Prize because they are the victims of the nuclear bomb. I had a proposal back in 2011, in uh, 13, in a conference in. Hiroshima, they should receive the Nobel Peace Prize with the organization, the victims from the Soviet Union, from semi-Palatine testing in Kazakhstan, and the organization from Nevada and Marshall Island. They have suffering a lot too. So, but the Nobel Committee did not include them this time, but maybe next time. Maybe next time, yeah, but they're doing better, at least this year. They, <laughs> they may give it to some warmongering politician next year, but uh, at least this year, they got it right. Um, that's right, that's right. And you're going to Oslo as well in the beginning of November, and you will receive uh, uh, the really Nobel Peace Prize, I understand. Yes, a prize from an organization uh, started by Frederick Heffermel and his uh colleagues and, and allies there in Norway, uh, which is a great uh, honor for me. And I, and I look forward to meeting a bunch of Norwegian peace activists who I've never met in person. I've only met on Zoom and email. Um, you know. I will try to be there in Oslo on the 10th of November. Oh, one the 10th of November, you'll receive it in Oslo. Is that right? In the Literature House in Oslo. In the Literature House. What a wonderful uh, name for a venue. Yeah, it is. It's a very nice place in Oslo and it's uh, close to the palace, but it's a very good place to have uh, to receive the price. I think I think Norway, you know, has done its share compared to some countries in advancing peace. Um, one uh, one person who traveled from Oslo to here in in Virginia, who I got to know, uh, was Johan Galtung. And oh. I, I wonder if you if you talk to people about uh, his wisdom and, and his lessons uh, when you when you bike <laughs> around the world. Of course, Johan Galtung uh, was a good friend of me. He uh, passed away. I think was that this year. I think it was this year in January, yeah. February. He passed away. He was a really great guy. And uh, and uh, and two and uh, one things I will say about the Norwegian government, they want two state solution in Middle East. And that's a good thing with Norwegian government. But they should be much tougher as well. They should tell the ambassador to come home because this situation, what Israel is doing now, is not good for the world peace, you know. So, but something the Norwegian government do pretty good, but we are many good, as you said, Frederick Hefamil and other people who do very good for peace and the peace movement in Norway waking up now and uh, they, they want to stop the war in Ukraine. 
And Norway also sells weapons around the world, and Norway is, is number seven in military spending per capita because it's not a lot of people in Norway. Uh, the United States, of course, is, is number one in all things military, uh, but I, I think these other countries' principal role is to legitimize the crimes of the United States, to, to make them the crimes of the NATO alliance or the international community, rather than just the rogue government in Washington, D.C., uh, and I wish they wouldn't do it. Yeah, that's right, and this is uh, terrible what the Norwegian company do now. They produce so much weapon, and they earn very good business for this, but this is is a very bad for for the human being to sell those weapons, and they maybe use it now in the war in Middle East as well, coming from Norway. So uh, we have to change this policy. We have to stand up and tell the government, and uh, that we are planning now in Norway. A lot of campaign we do that for different organization, mm -hmm. and the people in Norway told me to come over and see how people do in USA. I was in Boston. Very interesting to meet the people there in Boston as well. They have a lot of protest and a lot of activity, you know. So uh, this way, it's very good to come over here and meet with your organization here. We'll be on war. Do a great job here in Connecticut. And the host where I stay with here is a really active uh, activist for peace. Uh, that's wonderful that you're making these connections. We've got about one minute left. Tora Nerland, uh, where can people go and what can people do to follow your work and be in touch with you? They can go to Buy for Peace uh, Facebook page, buyforpeace.no, or they can go to my own page, Tori Nealan, uh, on Facebook as well. So uh, we want people to go with us over the whole world. Please take contact with us. And we are planning bike ride in North Korea. We are planning bike ride in Iran. We are planning bike ride from Kazakhstan to Iran next year as well. So we want to go to other country, so my different opinion and we have, so that is our message from Bank for Peace Norway. Well, you are going to be in very good shape and maybe the world in a little bit better shape, we can hope. Uh, we, we have been speaking with Tora Nerland. The website is bikeforpeace.no, also on Facebook. Tora, thank you for everything you're doing and for coming on Talk World Radio. Thank you very much. This is Talk World Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at rootsaction.org. Help end war at worldbeyondwar.org. Read or listen to today's Peace Almanac entry at peacealmanac.org. All past shows can be heard at talkworldradio.org. Talk World Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way.